Today I would like to mourn the death of a beloved technology, Google Amp. I would like to offer a moment of silence. <clears throat> yeah, no one cares about Google Amp. Good riddance. Everyone wanted this to die the day it was created. Google is very well known for killing technologies. They are so well known that there's even a website that catalogues everything they've ever killed throughout their entire life. And there is a lot of things on this list. Now, unlike other things on this list, Google AMP won't be officially dead, but Google will be killing any possible use case it ever had, leading to no one ever having a reason to use it. So the reason why people use Google AMP or an accelerated mobile page is if you ran a news website and you wanted it to rank inside of the news tab on Google on a mobile device, it had to be an AMP page. They just wouldn't rank anything else. So you're basically just being held captive and if you didn't use it well, no one's gonna see your news content. So what they're gonna be doing is fixing that problem. The page experience update will consider several page experience signals, including the top three core web vitals metrics, LCP, FID, and CLS. These are basically the way that Google defines if a page actually loads quickly. In addition, the top stories carousel feature on Google search will be updated to include all news content as long as it meets the Google News policy. This means that the AMP format is no longer required and that any page irrespective of its core web vital score or page experience status will be eligible to appear in the top stories carousel. That is basically a death blow to Google AMP, but they don't stop there. As part of the page experience update, we're expanding the usage of non-AMP content to power the core experience on news.google.com and in the Google News app. So all of the news content that Google provides, you won't need to use AMP anymore. And lastly, just to kick it while it's down, AMP content will no longer have a special badge in Google search saying that it's actually AMP content, so it doesn't encourage users to go and click on that content because they think it's something special. All of this is a really, really good change. I didn't think there would come a time where I say that Google actually did something good. Now, I don't think they did this out of some humanitarian effort because they want to make the web more free. They probably did this because they just can't be bothered maintaining anymore and it's just not worth actually doing. Now, if you've never used AMP before because you don't hate yourself, what it basically is is a front-end web framework. In the same vein as something like React or Angular or Vue, basically it's just Google's take on this architecture. So what's being killed here are AMP websites. I don't expect AMP stories to go anywhere. More and more sites are loving the idea of embedding stories into the site like Instagram and Twitter and YouTube has now. That's not going anywhere. AMP ads aren't going anywhere either, but I don't think anyone really cares how you're actually building an ad. The problem is the ad itself. And AMP emails, I really wish we stopped embedding megabytes of HTML into emails, but that'll be sticking around as well. However, AMP websites are the one that most people actually have a serious problem with. As you can see, it's no different from any other sort of web framework. I'm not a fan of it. It's... it's okay though if you really want a framework. There are plenty of other frameworks out there though that I don't really think there's any reason to tie yourself directly to Google. So the reason why AMP exists, at least Google's reason for it, is it's designed to build fast web pages as defined by how Google defines something as fast, and that is by their core web vitals. So they have LCP, largest contentful paint, FID, first input delay, and then CLS, cumulative layout shift. LCP is how long it takes the page to load. Anything less than two and a half seconds is considered good. And if you're building pages this heavy, that probably is relatively good. FID is how long it takes until a user is actually able to make any input on the page. And then CLS is basically how stable the elements on the page actually are. So if you have things like constantly moving across the page, that would give you a really poor score. And while you can go and tweak how the page looks, every single AMP page ends up fundamentally looking exactly the same. It doesn't matter if you're on The Guardian or Washington Post or New York Post or literally any news website, all of them look like the exact same website. This takes all the fun out of web design and all the fun out of discovering a new website and seeing how it actually looks for the first time. But the biggest problem with AMP is that it fundamentally fails at its one core job, at making websites fast. Because yes, while AMP is going to be fast if you compare it relative to a really badly designed website and there just so happens to be 
a lot of really badly designed websites out there that are just using web frameworks and not really thinking about what they're doing, it doesn't address the core problem with what makes websites slow. AMP is a band-aid over fundamentally bad web design that has been encouraged by companies like Google for years on end. If you want to make a fast website, before you even consider touching something like AMP, firstly, you should be restricting the number of third-party connections. Do you need to go and request Google Fonts? Do you need to pull your libraries in from a CDN? Why are you doing that? Can you go and store it locally and deploy it with the website? In a lot of cases, yes you can. And what about telemetry? Do you need to be sending every single thing the user does back to something like Google Analytics? No, you don't. Most websites are collecting data and not actually doing anything with that data. I might do a video in the future about the cult of big data. Do you need the official share buttons from things like TikTok or Twitter or Facebook? No, you can replicate those in two minutes by just using HTML buttons on the website. Do you need auto-playing embedded videos? Absolutely not. And in a lot of cases, all this does is annoys the user and makes them leave your site. One really good example of this is go look at a product page for anything where they want to really show off the product, like say like a super bike or some sort of fancy laptop. There'll always be a video there just showing off what the device actually is. That is making your website slower. Also restrict unnecessary elements. Do you need to have flashy JavaScript animations for every single thing the user does? I'm sure you've seen a website before where you scroll down the page and you see things like slide in from the side as you're actually going down the page. If you remove that, would that take anything away from your site? Probably not. Or how about going and downloading massive extra libraries and then just using like one or two functions from it? It's all well and good to say, hey, I'm going to build my website with React and heavily use React through everything I do. That's perfectly fine. But what if you go and download something like Lodash and then just use like one function from it? Lodash is very, very useful. But if you're just using one function from it, why don't you just go and take that function and put it into your code base or just go and write it yourself? Or how about you actually put some effort into your website and just make things lazy load? There's no reason to load everything on your website the second the user goes and loads it. If there's a video at the bottom of the page, that video doesn't need to be loaded until the user can actually see it. A lot of those arguments I made were from an article by Marco Sarek explaining how to actually fight against Google AMP and why using Google AMP probably just doesn't make sense in the first place. Now, with all this stuff about Google AMP, I'm absolutely not saying that JavaScript is inherently bad. I know there are people in my audience who despise JavaScript and wish it would go away and think we should be building websites with pure HTML and CSS. That's never going to happen. Sure, some people are going to do it, but the industry is never going to go in that direction. There's too much money put into actually having interactive pages. But this doesn't mean that you should be wasting performance for the sake of wasting it. Now, I don't actually have a problem with Google running a web framework. They're a web company. Most of them have some sort of framework. My second favorite framework is React, and that's by Facebook Open Source. So that's not the whole problem here. But the problem with the whole Google AMP thing is there just wasn't an option on mobile. You had to use AMP. That's all you get. Now, I don't have a problem with Google having a web framework. They're a massive web-based company, and it sort of just makes a lot of sense. In fact, my second favorite web framework is actually React, which is by Facebook open source. And you could probably make the argument that Facebook is about as bad as Google actually is. One of the problems that I have with Google and AMP, though, is that Google has been actively lying about what AMP is actually used for when it comes to search. So they say, when an AMP page is available, it can be featured on mobile search as part of rich results and carousels. While AMP itself isn't a ranking factor, speed is a ranking factor for Google search. Google search applies the same standard to all pages, regardless of the technology used to build the page. But that completely goes against what the update's actually saying. This documentation is still prior to the update. So they are actively lying in their documentation. This is the problem that I have with Google. They are so massive that even if they go and actively lie to you, there's nothing you can really do about it. 
Killing AMP in Google search is a requirement for a more open web. Killing Google would be much better, but that one's a little bit harder to do. Now, the author of the article I heard about this from speculates about why this is being done. So he says that Google AMP was never that popular. It was controversial from the day it was introduced and received big pushback and a lot of hate, but Google stuck to its guns for years. Also, there's been a lot of antitrust scrutiny around Google and this seems like a pretty easy place where a lawyer could latch onto and say, hey, you are actively forcing people to only use your technology or you won't rank them. What's the deal there? That seems like a pretty good case. Now, I tried to look for a few articles in the planning of this video, but I didn't find anyone actually talking about this. There was a post over on Hacker News, and I think I found this on Reddit, but that's, uh, that's about all. There wasn't like an article from Engadget or any of the tech sites. It's just this one site and the Google documentation. So please try to get the message out there. And I truly hope that Google AMP one day ends up in this list and is finally going to be properly killed by Google. So I think that's gonna be everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chica, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Mitchell, Pity, Steven T's, Thoreau, Tony Tushar, and all of my two dollar supporters. If you'd like to support work and links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, start, leave, pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel, Brody Robertson Plays, where I stream games twice a week on YouTube and Twitch. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. So I think that's everything for me, and I'm out.